JPN keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones. Hi guys. Before we get into the news, please remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and to share the news with someone today. Now on to the news. Students kept home as Prince of Bond Permit Defense at Retirement Primary. Prince of Students of Retirement Primary School in Magotti, St. Elizabeth, are refusing to send their children back to the institution until they receive a satisfactory response from the Ministry of Education to their demand for a permit offence to be constructed. For a second straight day, no child was at the school. President of the Parent Teacher Association, Shana Tilton on Tuesday morning, said that all parents are in solidarity on the issue. We haven't heard anything as yet, only on the news last night where they said they are aware of it. But we haven't received any call as yet. We have come to an agreement to keep the students at home so it can be more effective on what we are doing. We need a good response on, on how are they going to secure us, how the children going to feel safe at school. We need that. Parents on Monday stage a protest that was fueled by the recent invasion of the school compound by a machete-wielding man who threatened staff and the students. In 2022, the same man entered the schoolyard and wounded the former principal. Following the incident, the Minister of Education pledged to build a fence. Bar operator murdered in Spanish Town, the St. Catherine police have launched an investigation into the murder of a businesswoman in Spanish Town on Tuesday. That is Opal Bennett, a 40-year-old bar operator of Carlitz Road, Spanish Town in the parish. About 1.20 a.m., Bennett was found along March Penn Road with what appeared to be gunshot wounds to the upper body. She was transported to the Spanish Town Hospital, where she succumbed to her injuries. No motive has been established in the matter. Taxman gunned down in Hanover. A taxi driver was shot dead while sitting at a shop along the Sandy Bay Main Road in Hanover on Monday evening. The deceased has been identified as 37-year-old German Hunter, otherwise called Richie, a resident of Ball Ground in Montpelier in the parish. Information received indicate that around 6.50 p.m., Hunter parked his grade 2010 Toyota Wish motor car beside a shop at the intersection of High Level and the Sandy Bay Roads. He reportedly sat on a chair outside when a yellow motorcycle with two men aboard drove up and opened gunfire, hitting him. Residents, upon hearing the loud explosions, summoned the police who found the deceased and on his back in a pool of blood suffering from gunshot wounds. He was taken to the Noel Holmes Hospital where he was pronounced dead. Police say a motive for the killing has not yet been established. Hunter is the second taxi driver to be murdered in as many days. On Sunday, two cabbies were shot one fatally along Whitehall Avenue in St. Andrew. Man shot in Lauriston, Spanish Town. The Spanish Town police are probing a gun attack on a man in his home in the community of Lauriston early Monday morning. Residents reported during explosions coming from the man's house around 12.07 a.m. When checks were made, the man was found suffering from gunshot wounds to his upper body and head. The police were contacted. Upon arrival, the police retrieved a six sawyer magazine with 13 9mm rounds. The injured man was assisted to the Spanish Town Hospital, where he was admitted in a serious condition. No motive has been established for the shooting. Investigation continues. Businessman among two charged following gun seizure in St. James. A businessman was one of two people charged following the seizure of an illegal gun in Granville, St. James, on Monday. The businessman, 20 year old Joshua Bell, from Portobello, was charged alongside Linval Watson, 22, otherwise called Brian, from Kinggate District in Anchovy, both in St. James. They were charged with possession of a prohibited firearm. Reports are that around 1 p.m., a team of police officers were carrying out operations at a vehicle checkpoint along the Chambers Drive main road when they signaled and stopped on his son selfie. Bell was reportedly driving the car. Watson was a passenger seated in the back. It is alleged that while officers engaged the driver, both men began behaving in a manner that arose the suspicion of the police. They were asked to exit the car, and a search was reportedly conducted in their presence. It is alleged that during the search, the police found a silver and black gun under the back section of the front passenger seat. Both men were taken into custody and are later arrested and charged. No court date was given for the two accused. Security guard accused of stealing over $950,000 in goods from supermarket charge. A 22-year-old St. Elizabeth security guard, Damien Evans, has been charged for allegedly stealing food and other items 
valued at over $950,000 from the supermarket where he was employed. Evans of Southfield District is charged with simple arsony. A court date is being finalized. Reports from the Black River Police are that between Saturday, March 30, and Saturday, April 6, 2024, Evans stole meat, bread, liquors, and other items valued over $950,000 from a supermarket in Junction. A report was subsequently made to the police after he was caught stealing additional items. He was arrested and charged. Man shot dead, another injured, during gun attack in Cassava Peace. One man was shot dead and another injured during a gun attack at a bar on Glen Drive in Cassava Peace, Kingston 8, Monday afternoon. The police said the attack is as a result of an ongoing war in the community between rival gangsters. The deceased has been identified as 33-year-old Alfino Legister, otherwise called Reds, from Man of You Drive in the community. The injured man is also from the community. It was reported that around 1.15 p.m., both men were inside the bar when two men, both armed with handguns, alerted from a grey Subaru motor car. The gunmen, the police said, opened fire inside the bar, it is the no deceased in his head and the no injured man in the midsection of his body. Lawmen said they found Legister inside the bar, sitting on a chair, suffering from gunshot wounds. The police took him to the Kingston Public Hospital, where doctors pronounced him dead. A resident of the community took the injured man to hospital. He was shot in his chest and abdomen. The gunman escaped towards Manning Zill Road in the Subaru motor car, the police said. Hales criticized his government plan to alleviate water crisis out west. Shadow Minister on Water Ian Hales is criticizing the government's water infrastructure plan to alleviate the water crisis in Hanover and Westmoreland. He argues that long term planning and the sustainable solutions are needed to meet the increase in water demands. Minister with Responsibility for Water, Matthew Samuda, says an additional $25 million has been allocated for the next six weeks to facilitate choking of water in the two neighboring parishes. Additionally, Samuda says funds have been identified to purchase 2,000 black water tanks for citizens in Hanover and Westmoreland who are most in need. But Hales, while acknowledging the commendable effort of any investment in water infrastructure, contends that the government's approach is short-sighted and ultimately insufficient. The question is, it's not that we don't have the water in Westmoreland. We have the water in Westmoreland. And, and let, before I go further, the rapid response unit that used to deal with critical situation of drought, as we are now faced with in Westmoreland, it was under the Jamaica Labour Party government that it was disbanded, dismantled, disbanded, and thrown out the door. And this has put us in a situation now where we are at the mercy of contractors that truck water. We are at the mercy because they have this abandoned and disbanded. Dis Dismantle the rapid response unit. What we need to do in Westmoreland is to take the water from the Cabarita River, a, take what we can from the Roaring River, which is around 20 million in both places every single day, and ensure that the people of Westmoreland can get water. And for future development, don't care what type of development, we would still have water to supply those development going forward. That is what needs to be done. The, 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 the bag of mouth talk and the running around on government helicopter, not going to solve the problem that we face in Westmoreland. Jill B's fight for KSAMC reaches Supreme Court. The Jamaica Labour Party's Jill P fight for the Kingston and the St. Andrew Municipal Corporation, KSAMC, has reached the Supreme Court as the Susan candidate for the Kintyre Division as alleged irregularities in a claim that could trigger a revolt in one polling division. In a filing dated March 11, Kelvin Clark has asked for a declaration that voids the results for polling stations 82A and 82B in the local government elections held on February 26, he alleged that on election day, there were significant irregularities that resulted in a substantial distortion or subversion of the process of free and fair election. The location of polling stations 82A and 82B had been switched without any prior notice to voters and election workers, causing a significant number of voters registered to those divisions to be disenfranchised, Clark said. He claimed further, the contrary to Section 35.6 of the Representation of the People Act, voters who attended polling stations 82A and 82B were prevented from voting by purported election workers, although the time had not yet elapsed for voting. Winning People's National Party PMP candidate and now councillor Vivian Brown Bond, returning officer Eric Malcolm and the Attorney General 
are named as the first, second, and third respondents, respectively. There was also an affidavit from dressmaker Alva Johnson, who outlined that she faced a series of difficulties because of the changes before being able to cast her vote. The claim was filed under the Election Petition Act. Director of Elections, Glasspool Brown, said earlier this morning that he was making some checks before commenting on the matter. The Electoral Office of Jamaica lists 82A and 82B as polling stations, which make up polling division 82 in the Kintyre division. Polling station 82A was at the Constitution Hill All Age School. Brown Bond picked up 106 votes to Clark's 20. Four ballots were rejected. The votes council presented 34.7% of the 375 voters registered to vote in that station. Polling station 82B was located at the Kintar Community Center and Brown Bond also won in that box, polling 42 votes. Polling station 82B was located at the Kintar Community Center and Brown Bond also won in that box, polling 42 votes to Clark 6. Some 163 persons were eligible to vote. Picking up the Kintyre division was crucial to the PMP taking control of the KSAMC from the JLP. While both parties ended with an equal number of divisions, 20 each, the PMP won the popular vote and earned the right, under the law, to select a mayor. The Kintyre division falls in the St. Andrew East Rural Constituency, which is represented in Parliament by the JLP's Juliet Holness. PNP Councilor Andrew Swaby was sworn in on March 12 as mayor of Kingston, replacing the JLP's Delroy Williams, who is now the deputy. JBN will keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.